Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Rita Moreno's versatility as a performer has led to decades of success on stage, screen and television. She is the only female entertainer to have won all four of the most prestigious show business awards. How Rita Moreno had a near-fatal affair with Marlon Brando. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Rita Moreno is a Puerto Rican singer, dancer and actress. She is the first and only Hispanic and one of the few performers who have won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar and a Tony and at the time the second Puerto Rican to win an Academy Award. Rita Moreno is one of those rare performers who can do it all. The Puerto Rican actress can sing, dance and act. She starred in famous movie musicals such as West Side Story and Singing in the Rain, and on television in the remake of the sitcom One Day at a Time. At first glance, Rita Moreno's career appears to consist of triumph after triumph. Moreno, who started life as Rosa Dolores Elverio, was born on December 11, 1931, to Rosa Maria Elverio and Paco Elverio in Humacio, Puerto Rico. For most of Moreno's childhood, her mum worked hard to support them. She worked as a seamstress, did piecework for a lingerie factory, and made paper roses for Woolworth Department Store to give her daughter a better life. In Moreno's eyes, her story is the epitome of the American dream. She was only five years old when her parents divorced and her mother moved with her to New York City, leaving her baby brother behind. They had little money and her mother couldn't afford to take care of two children. Sadly, he stayed in Puerto Rico with Moreno's grandparents. She didn't speak English until elementary school. She was five years old when she began learning English. When she arrived in New York City, Moreno began taking dance classes and quickly started working in the film industry. Though the actress had only lived in the United States for six years at the time, she used her bilingual status to make moves early in her career. She worked as a linguist, dubbing American films in her native Spanish at the tender age of 11 years old. Shortly after this, Moreno made her Broadway debut at age 13 as Angelina in Sky Drift. This role caught the attention of Hollywood filmmakers, and she started receiving offers from Hollywood agents. Her first film was called So Young, So Bad, and was released in 1950. After this role, she signed a seven-year contract with Louis B. Mayer MGM Studios, where she adopted the stage name Rita Moreno. A young Rita Moreno knew she wanted to become an actress. With no Latina role model in Hollywood, she decided to emulate Elizabeth Taylor, an approach that helped her land a contract with MGM at the age of 17. However, Moreno soon discovered that Hollywood didn't know what to do with a Latina girl. As her career began, Moreno became the house ethnic. I became the house ethnic, Moreno told about her early days in the movies, and that meant I had to play anything that was not American, so I became this gypsy girl, or I was a Polynesian girl, or I was an Egyptian girl. Another stock character she often appeared as was a Hispanic spitfire, a word she came to despise. Though Moreno was at least initially happy to be working, this wasn't the career she'd hoped for, but she was sure she could do more, and that she'd get the opportunity to prove it. I was determined that with perseverance and faith, at some point someone would say, this girl has talent and would cast me in something meaningful. Moreno was offered a seven-year contract with MGM by studio head Louis B. Mayer only four years after her Broadway debut when she was 17. For the next few years, Moreno was offered smaller roles in feature films. Her first role for MGM Studios was in the musical The Toast of New Orleans. Two years later, she landed a small role as the actress Zelda Zanders in Singing in the Rain. Moreno was often typecast and remembers frequently being offered stereotypical ethnic or sexualized roles. In 1961, Moreno was cast as Anita in the film adaptation of the musical West Side Story. 
For her portrayal, Moreno won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Fia kept her from auditioning for Maria in the Broadway production, and as soon as she saw Chita Rivera perform Anita on stage, she realised that she'd made a huge mistake. When the opportunity to play that iconic role in the film came along, this time she didn't hesitate to audition. Obviously, Moreno nailed it and got the part of Anita, but it wasn't a guarantee. Moreno had been dancing since she was a child, but her speciality was Spanish dance and not the jazz that the part required. Prior to her audition, she ran out to a dance school and took some lessons, but she didn't feel ready. Luckily, a friend of hers had played the role in a touring production and helped her bone up on some of the steps. She was up for Anita, the passionate and brave girlfriend of gang leader Bernardo. Moreno worked on her dancing and was thrilled to land the part. Playing Anita brought up a lot of contradictory feelings for Moreno. On the one hand, she loved the part because Anita was a real woman who stood up for herself and expressed genuine emotions. But at the same time, she was utterly frustrated by other incidents on set. Filming had some problematic moments, as when the movie's Hispanic characters all had makeup applied to darken their skin to the same shade. Moreno pointed out that people in Puerto Rico had a variety of skin, however this didn't keep her from turning in a believable and nuanced performance in a role she could finally fully relate to. I've been a neater, Moreno once declared. I know this girl inside out. She says it was the first time she played a character who stood up for herself. Interestingly, the character of Anita became my role model after all those years. Anita was a young Hispanic woman with dignity, self-respect and enormous strength. West Side Story became a huge success and Moreno was lauded for her accomplished portrayal of Anita. She won a Golden Globe Award and was surprised and delighted to receive an Academy Award. Moreno was the first Latina performer to win, making her an icon and role model for her community. There were some highlights in Moreno's pre-West Side Story career. Jean Kelly gave her the opportunity to play Zelda Zanders in Singing in the Rain. Zelda was a key role in the film and wasn't an ethnic stereotype. Moreno also featured on the cover of Life magazine in 1954, which led to a contract with Fox. While at that studio, she was given the role of Tup Tim in the film version of The King and I, though Moreno knew she wasn't the best choice to play a Burmese character. Yet most of the time, Moreno continued to be consigned to one-note roles that made her feel more and more and more diminished, as she explained in an interview. There's a way of being racially insulting to someone without ever using the bad words. You get bypassed it is assumed that you can only speak with an accent. In 1961, Moreno attempted suicide. Her troubled and tempestuous relationship with Marlon Brando was one reason she tried to end her life, but her seemingly dead-end career in Hollywood was another factor. Rita Moreno had a near-fatal affair with Marlon Brando. During their eight-year affair, she endured chronic philandering, emotional abuse, a botched abortion, and that's only the beginning. I remember how he spoke to me, how he played the drums, how he made love, and how I almost died from loving him. Moreno met Brando on the set of his 1954 movie Desiree, when he was 30 years old and far more experienced than she, since she was just 22 years old at the time. Just meeting him that first day sent my body temperature skyrocketing, as though I had been dropped into a very hot bath, and I went into a full-body blush. It was the sort of rush that inspires poetry and songs. Their intimacy did not lead to mutual respect, however, as she writes that Brando cheated on her frequently in order to try to meet his insatiable sexual appetite. In order to stand her ground, she would date other famous men in order to make him jealous, including future Oscar winner Dennis Hopper. She tells a story about how a man that she didn't know made aggressive eyes at her while his regal wife sat beside him, only to later learn it was then-Senator John F. Kennedy. The paramour that drove Brando the most insane, however, was when she went on a number of dates with pop star Elvis. 
Little did he know that Elvis and his famous pelvic thrusts did not match up to the sexual chemistry that she had with Brando. My dates nearly always concluded in a tender tussle on my living room floor, with Elvis's pelvis in that famous gyration straining against his taut trousers. I could feel him thrust against my clothed body and expecting the next move, but it never came. She said of the singer, no matter the emotional toll, she kept coming back to Brando. Two of the lowest points in their torrid affair came when he pressured and paid for her to have an abortion when she became pregnant with their child. Shortly after that, he flew away to film Mutiny on the Bounty, and she was left heartbroken when he fell in love with his new co-star. We were locked in the ultimate folie a deux, a crazy love that lasted for years, until one day I quite literally was forced out of a coma and had to choose life over him. After he returned and he picked her back up, she was left alone in his house at one point, and she took the chance to attempt an overdose on pills. I went to bed to die. This wasn't a revenge suicide, but a consolation, an escape from pain death, she said, crediting her survival to his assistant, who found her and took her to the hospital to have her stomach pumped. A therapist told the lovers to keep away from each other for their own health, and finally they relented. Her romantic was also far more successful after she finished her affair with Brando, as she was set up with and ended up marrying a doctor named Lenny Gordon. Though Moreno had demonstrated her acting abilities and received her industry's highest honour, the offers she received post-Oscar win were for the same kind of stereotypical roles in low-quality movies that made up the bulk of her resume. She decided to stand up for herself and refuse these parts. The end result? I didn't do a film for seven years after West Side Story. During this hiatus, Moreno kept working. She tackled roles on stage in London and New York City, appeared at nightclubs and took guest spots on television westerns in order to pay the bills. Yet the experience wasn't easy. It broke my heart, she admitted. I couldn't understand it, I still don't understand, and there you have it, Hollywood's mindset at the time. Unfortunately, Moreno still had to push back against expectations that she would play stereotypes. At one audition, upon learning which part the director had in mind for her, she informed him, I'm sorry, but I don't do Mexican whorehouse madams. Her career is undeniably impressive, but she might have done even more had she regularly been considered for the kind of parts she merited. Even after winning the Oscar, Moreno's agent still only submitted her for exotic and Latina roles. Moreno decided to leave the mistreatment of Hollywood and mostly acted in summer theatre for the next seven years. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Rita Moreno, the first Hispanic Hollywood legend who took it all?